it's been raining like crazy and our land is looking amazing. But the temperatures are going to be dropping this week, so we needed to prepare for the frost. We seriously have so much to share with you this week. A poorly animal, which if you have chickens, you might want to hear this because this is the first time we're hearing about it and it's really good to know. I also share one of my favorite salads with you that I make and Luke does a little bit of cooking. And we experiment with something that you guys suggested on a tiny piece of our land. Hey guys, welcome to our channel. The past few days we've had non-stop rain, not super heavy, but it was just non-stop. So we couldn't really do that much. And I've been keeping an eye on the, on the, on the weather report, on the temperatures, because we still haven't gotten our first frost yet. Now over here, we do get a frost um, from around this time of year, mid-November, till about probably around March. But there are people who are even our neighbors across the river they don't even get a, get a frost. So there's a lot of microclimates about. Even on our own land, when we walk down towards the earth in the middle of winter, we can feel up to like a five degree difference. It just drops just because we're going down into the valley. So we've been keeping an eye on it because there are some things we need to do before the frost hits, like finish harvesting some little things in the garden, protecting some things and protecting some equipment. And also, we haven't even had a fire on yet because, I mean, we work all day and then we go into the caravan, we cook and with the heat of the cooker, it's enough to heat this tiny house. I checked the weather report and it looks like tonight is going to be the coldest day so far, this after summer anyway. It says it's going to be between 0 and 5 and, well, it says 3 in fact, 3 degrees and sometimes when it, the weather report says 3, we do get a frost, so I just want to make sure um, we protect what we need to protect. Now last year we only burnt pine in the, in the wood stove, so I went out and bought this contraption. I've never owned one of these. It's like 36 euros this, not cheap, but it does have, they're about, how long are they? A meter and a half times five, so seven and a half meters I guess. I mean, eventually when we have our fire at the ruin, I'm guessing we'll have a longer chimney, but hopefully I won't lose these until we actually rebuild the ruin. Anyway, so today I'm just going to go around and do everything we need to do before the frost hits. And first things first is we want to have a fire on tonight, so I've got to clean that chimney because pine, the amount of resin that comes out of it, it's very dangerous. You can set your chimney on fire. A lot of fires start like that actually here in Portugal. So I'm going to jump on the roof and just give it a good clean. Never done this before. Let's see how it goes. <laughs> Throw it up. <laughs> okay, we're up. Sarah! Nothing, I'm just pointing the camera at you. <laughs> Beautiful day, clouds are going away. Whenever there's a lot of cloud, it never really drops below zero, just because it creates that warming effect with all the clouds. But when it's a clear sky, it gets chilly in winter. Ooh, there is quite a bit, I'll show you. Now we really don't put the fire on much, just because our house is so small. Can you see that? You won't be able to see anything down there. I can't either. <laughs> Let's clean our pipes. <laughs> oh, that's a nice fit. Oh, it's stuck. Can I stand? Uh oh. Okay. That does a really good job. Well done, brushy. <laughs> okay, you can go back on. Done.
I'm going to tell you a few interesting facts about ash. It can be a natural source of potassium, so do not get rid of it. It has a liming effect, so you can remedy excessively acidic soil. Decomposing materials in your compost bin can become somewhat acidic. So wood ash can help with this. But like everything else, moderation is very important and putting too much of it can inhibit plant growth. So be careful about that. And never put it directly on a plant. And I have also learned that it repels slugs and snails. And we've got quite a few of them showing up on our cabbages. So I'm going to put a little bit of a ring around it and see if it works. Stop eating our cabbages, you are destroying them. Seriously guys, every night I come around the garden and I get a huge handful of cabbage for the girls. A nice assortment and they love it. But if the caterpillars and the slugs are going to eat it all, there's going to be none left. They're really working fast, these little guys. So, get off. There's nothing left of this cabbage. Guys, I know you're not supposed to put it directly on the plant or on the soil, but I think a light shaving of it, let's see. I think I've decided instead of going around individual plants, I will go around the whole bed. And then I will go around and take off all the little animals that are eating our veggies. I hate touching slugs more than anything in the world. Ugh. Okay, next is to harvest all the remaining bits and pieces from the garden that will die with the frost. Um, this is spinach and we've had it all summer and we've just been eating and eating. I had a look up online and it said eight, it goes, it can survive up to minus eight. I don't know if it's the same variety or not, but I'm gonna risk it, I think, because we love it. I could pick it all, blanch it and freeze it, I guess, but I'm hoping it will survive for a bit longer so we can keep eating and hopefully it'll keep growing. We'll see. But we do have a lot of stuff to pick, some peppers, some jalapenos, there's some, some gourd over there. Oh, and we have to get the pumpkins that are outside. They've been in the sun for the past couple of weeks trying to mature. And we're going to put them in the shade house just so they're a bit more insulated in there. And hopefully they don't go bad. I think that's about it, not loads, some big mamas, which with this we can turn into like a water bottle or something for a giant, for me. <laughs> I mean, look at that. <laughs> Three of those. There's a bunch of basil, which I would probably pick and blend with olive oil and freeze in ice cube trays to be used later. Got loads and loads of beans. We'll use these for seeds, so we'll dry them out. Loads of green peppers, some orange and red. I think these I'm going to cut them in whatever, three or four, and grill them and then preserve them in olive oil. I've done the same thing with aubergines. We do have a video about that about a year or two ago. Hello, Molly. You want to say something? No? You want to go walkies? Ooh, what big ears you have. Um, yeah, we'll put the link to that video in the description below. I'm going to make them exactly the same as I did those aubergines. See how they come. There's a few melons that didn't quite make it, which we can give to the pigs maybe. A bunch of jalapenos, which we love. And you'd be surprised, 
how expensive pickled jalapenos are here. For a jar this big, they're about five, nearly six euros. So it didn't quite grow enough this year. We only had two plants, but there's quite a few, a couple of handfuls anyway. Here they are. Jalapenos, which we love. What else? Oh, and some green tomatoes. There's a bunch of cherry and some bigger ones. Uh, these we'll put in a brown paper bag and hopefully in about a week we'll be able to eat them. They won't be the best tomato in the world, but they're all right. It would be a waste to just leave them in the ground with the frost. These raspberries did really well this year, even though some of them didn't have as much shade and some of them died. But we, these, are, these fruit twice a year. And there's some really nice ones. I don't think they freeze, do they? Because at the moment they're really nice. Beauties, look at that. Now that Luke took out the long beans from this garden, it's time to show you how the broad beans are doing that we planted a couple of weeks ago when we had our lovely volunteers here with us. Da -da -da. Da. And we also planted peas along the border. Ding. When I'm thinning out things, if they're really close together, I just cut. I don't pull out from the roots, so I don't damage the other plant of next to it. Otherwise, well, that's it. Okay, so with these beans growing, I wonder what the secret garden looks like, but I'm not gonna go for now. I want to be super surprised. I want them to grow a little bit bigger before I go and check it out. But when I do, I will take you with me. Next, we're gonna get some straw and protect all the asparagus. And I have a couple of, um, what are they called again? Chinese gooseberries or so Fisalis, I think. And um, they haven't, they just started flowering last week. We haven't had any fruit off them. I've got two plants and I'm pretty sure they die. I think we had one a couple of years ago and it died in the first. So I don't know. I'm just going to put a bunch of straw, but I think the, the frost would destroy the leaves anyway. So it's for nothing, but we'll do it anyway. For the lemon and for the citrus trees that we have in here, they still have some insulation on the bark on the main stem from last year. And we also put a bottle of filled with water next to it. I don't know why it worked last year, so we're going to do it again this year. Luke mentioned making a bottle out of that gourd that we have. Well, this is what we made two years ago. It's a water bottle, but I don't use it because I just don't like the taste of the water once I put it in the bottle. But it still is really cute, right? And we do have last year's bottle gourds. Look, they're really cool. But now they have a lot of mold around them. So they're ready to sand and make something out of them. So what do you think, guys? 
What do you think we could make out of them? Musical instruments? I know they do that in Portugal. Or maybe a salt and pepper shaker with these two. Cool, huh? Once I'm in here as well, I might as well tell you so. I've been collecting pine cones from around the land. I try to collect the ones that are really good. If they look like this, they're really good fire starters. So if you have a lot around your land, it's worth picking them before it starts getting too wet and rainy. Okay. And I want to talk about this aloe vera, which is beautiful. It, but it is way too crammed in here. I know it, there's a lot of little plants in here. I do need to split it up so it can thrive. But the problem is that I got this cutting from my mother about two and a half years ago now. I got a lot of cuttings, but this is the only one that made it because in winter it dies. Every time there's a frost, it kills the aloe vera that would have been doing so well in summer. But this is doing really well and it survived two winters till now. So I'm really happy with it, but I don't think it's the right time to split it now because it might make it really weak. What do you guys think? Any suggestions? I do have to find out how to split it too because I'm pretty scared that I would split it and then kill the plant. I have to do a little bit more research about that. Now speaking about frost hurting the plants, over to Luke, he's going to share some good news with you guys. These are my beloved cafe lime leaf plants. We do love Thai cooking and these are very very important in Thai cooking and I've been looking for these to buy these since we've been here and only this year I bought a couple off a friend of mine. Thank you Linda. They're beautiful. So this winter I'm gonna leave them in these pots and I'm gonna mother the hell out of them. So I'm gonna take them in and out every day because I want them to survive and then hopefully next spring I'll put them in a bigger pot and hopefully the following winter we can just put them in the shade house. My babies! <laughs> Mmm, love cafe lime leaf. He really does, and I am going to love picking those leaves for him to put in his cooking when it's big enough. It really is a must-have ingredient for Thai cooking, and he loves cooking Thai food. And speaking about food, I am going to share with you my favorite salad. I don't think I can class it as cooking, it's more like chopping ingredients or picking ingredients and putting them all together. But this salad is a mix of fresh foraged and preserved ingredients and I love it. It's called a tuna couscous salad, the main ingredient being couscous. And then for this I took some of Luke's freshly picked green peppers. I also picked some tomatoes, some mint and some spinach. And then I went to forage for sorrel. In this couscous salad, I like to put capers and we don't have capers today. And this is, this is perfect because it's, it's got the bitterness of a caper. So, and it, it does remind me of the caper taste. And the preserved ingredients that I put in it were Sabrina's olives, which are delicious. And some sun-dried tomatoes of our harvest from last year, but I don't like putting them in just like that because they can be a little bit too chewy for me. So I, I boil some water, I put these tomatoes in it for like five to seven minutes. Then when I get them out, they're nice and soft and I can cut them and put them in the salad. The thing is that if I remember to do this before I actually boil the couscous, I will use that water to boil the couscous in because then it has a nice tomatoey taste and a nice red color. But I did forget to do that this time. And I also like to put a drizzle of a lemon juice in it, but I didn't have any this week. So if any of you guys try this after watching this video, let me know in the comments below. It's delicious. Now that I shared by amateur how to make a salad with you guys, now it's time for Luke to preserve a few of the things that we picked from the garden.
Luke made the best pasta yesterday with the green peppers and the basil. And it was delicious. We ate way too much and we didn't film it. So next time he makes it, I'll tell him to film it or give you the ingredients if you want to know how to make it. Now with the cooking done, it's time for experiment time, but we are also using some ingredients that we would normally use for cooking, which is vinegar and salt. But first, I want to share with you a video that we recently put on on Luke's other channel of gridding on a shoestring, and you might have missed it if you haven't subscribed to his channel yet. I love it, so I think you will enjoy watching it. It's just six minutes long, and he makes three beautiful benches out of three different types of trees. So if you want to watch it, at the end of this video, I'm going to put a reminder for you guys and you can click on that link then, or I will put it in the description below. Okay, now that we have all the everything frost proofed, <laughs> I'm going to head down with my strimmer and destroy some brambles. But before that, on the way down, we've got a lot of brambles that we've killed, not killed, cut down with the strimmer over the years. And I always see them coming back. A while ago, a bunch of you suggested we use pure vinegar mixed with salt and spray it on there. So we're going to try that today. On the way down, I'll destroy the few brambles that are coming up and Sarah here will spray them with the solution. So let's make it first. I thought I'd make, we'd make it in a bucket first so we can dissolve the salt and we can see that it's dissolved and then pour it into the sprayer here. They ran out of pure normal white vinegar, so I got some white wine vinegar, get them drunk as well. Sure, it can't harm. You're licking your lips for salt and vinegar, Dumbo. Just put in one kilo for now and see how that dissolves. Put another kilo in. We want to cause some destruction. Okay. Uh oh. <laughs> okay. See. It was in the other hand. Okay. And now, this is the pump it. All right, I'm going to grab the strimmer. I'm going to strim, Sarah's going to spray, and then we'll see if it kills them. In a minute. In a minute, guys. We only did a small section of our land with this experiment because it is pretty expensive when you think of all the ingredients that had to go into it. And if it doesn't work, yeah, well, at least we'd have tried, but at least we'd have tried on a small section. Now I'm going to take you to the caravan because it's time to introduce you to our poorly pet who we have called Wobble. Yes. We have tried many things over the last couple of days and now we've got the actual right thing to help her get better, hopefully. So fingers crossed. Sit. And down. And down. Clever girl. You want to see why 
you were saying, what is this noise? It's a chucky, and she's going to sleep with us today. Look. <laughs> she wants to come up. Stay inside, okay? Look. Look. The chucky. The chucky's inside. So this is the boarder that I told you about who is sleeping in our gypsy caravan and her name is either Wobble or Luke called her Bluey but she has not a very good story I'm afraid she has spread a leg what we think is it is spread a leg yeah. eh? and it is normally they get it when they're born so I just went undetected for so long which is not very nice <laughs> but basically four days ago I realized that she wasn't walking very well and she seemed to deteriorate pretty fast after that yeah. and we've been trying different ways we tried with um, bandages and tape bandages and plaster but nothing kept and we're hearing about this vet tape vet wrap which luke bought today and she is actually standing straight for the first time in three days yeah it's like a gauze that sticks to itself eh? yeah it's but before we have to be careful not to put the plaster onto her feathers because then to take it off it's a problem and it just kept slipping off it her kept slipping off this is really good stuff it sticks yeah. to itself it sticks to itself eh? and now you're standing up straight at least she's standing with her own weight on her own two feet <clears throat> She's like, ugh, don't make any of that shit. Very good. Mm -hmm. Looks very okay. I mean, she's standing. She couldn't stand. For those of you who don't know what spread a leg is, and I had no idea either before this happened to us, feet point to the side, and it makes it nearly impossible for them to walk. And when they're young chicks, it usually takes between three and four days to get better after you've corrected it with the proper stuff. There are a few reasons why chickens get this. So it's either inadequate flooring or bedding and it like they keep slipping. But she is the first chicken in the last four years that we've gotten this. And I'm pretty sure there's nothing slippery in our chicken coop. So I don't think it's that. It could also be genetic. So this would mean if she gets better, any of her children might get it too. So we'll have to be on the lookout. Whenever there's babies born, we have to check for spread a leg straight away. So, cause we can correct it. It only takes three to four days to correct if spotted early. And also it can also happen if you're having, if you have the eggs in an incubator and the temperature fluctuates, they can be born with spread a leg. Uh, she's just gonna stay. Come on! Whoa! You played the music! Come on, Nico! Come! Come on! No, come on, up, 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 up. Up, 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 Chucky, up. Clever, Chucky, clever, clever girl. Now she's standing. Good girl, good girl, good girl, good girl. Oh my goodness, good girl. <gasps> A worm! 
worm. <laughs> no, 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 she went through it. Go up, chuck it up with your nose. Or push her with your papa. Molly, look, with your papa. Push her up, and she gets up. Yes! Wow! Wow! Okay, come near that daddy again. Come. You've been standing for a while now. You want to go in? Huh? You want to go in when we can have some food? Huh? You want to go in? We can have some food? Hey? Strengthen up those little muscles of yours. This is day two of her new setup, and she seems to be standing more, falling less, which is good. But we do have to keep helping her up every so often with one hand, and otherwise, she's just been nibbling grass. But now it's time to go in because it's getting colder. Hey, Wobble, Wobble, do you want to go in? So, I have learned a very valuable lesson from this. Whenever there's baby chickens born, no matter how good the mother is, you should take care of them as well and see what's going on. Okay, so we're going to go inside because it's getting cold and you know what? Luke has to go out today shopping on his bike. Do you want to go and see that happening? Come, let's go a bit closer to home. So, news about the car. We still don't have wheels, no. We do have wheels. We have the e-bike, which Luke is going somewhere right now. But we are really lucky. We have nice neighbours and nice friends who have taken us once to collect water because we were running out. So he had to go to the spring to get water. And another time to get animal feed. And he can't do that with the e-bike because, yeah, the bags are massive. I have a really good feeling about Little Wobble. I think she's going to make it. I, I'm feeling very positive. As soon as I saw her standing there and keeping her balance, yeah, that's a good sign, right? Anyway, I'm going to go in because I'm getting pretty cold now and I think we're going to light the fire today, which is awesome. But before I go, I would like to say a huge welcome to our Patreon family, Murray. Thank you so much for choosing us to support. And Bo, thank you so much for adding to our renovation fund. We really appreciate it. And if you are new to our channel and you haven't subscribed, subscribe! What are you waiting for? And if you like this video, give us a nice thumbs up. If you don't hit that notification bell, you won't be informed when we put our next video on and it would be a shame to miss it. Because Luke streams a heck of a lot down by the three terraces and he uncovers a gem. And you'd be silly to miss it. So anyway, that's it from me. I hope you have an amazing day and go and watch this one next. We are going out soon and Molly has very big ears. Sometimes when Molly's really listening to everything I'm saying because she wants to go walkies. It's walkies. Oh. You wait there like a little angel. Must be the season of the witch. Must be the season of the witch.